You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of No More Future. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Morning spent screwing around at your school desks, afternoon spent studying for tests together, evening spent experimenting with the wildest games you could find. The days you spent babysitting George while his family was away. The afternoons you'd spend with your mom at the park on the weekends. A gentle touch of dad's hand on your forehead as you fought a fever in bed. Random memories, good and bad alike, all clashing together like dissonant tastes in an overwhelming dish. You can't feel the heat without the cold aftertaste as well, the sweet without the sour. It feels rather nice reliving your past like this, and terrible too. I miss those days. Huh? Nim, Nim turns to face you with a confused look in his eyes. Can't really blame him for that. You sort of gone on a silent on a silent tangent in your head, left him behind until now. S sorry, I was just busy thinking about something. You take a moment to reorganize your thoughts, not wanting to sound completely out of left field to your friend. I don't know. I guess I'm just feeling nostalgic for the past is all. Everything was just so much simpler back then, so much brighter. And even though I still had no clue what my future was going to look like. I at least felt like there was an invisible direction to my life. It had to be better than whatever I'm feeling right now. And again, that invisible direction ended up being a red herring as well. Your path ended where that wretched tumor began, and no other end in sight than the cold embrace of death. It's almost embarrassing in a way, whereas other like others like Nim were given a chance to follow their dreams and make something of their lives. You're given nothing but regret, and one final chance, of course. And even though the question that bothers you more than any other on most days is, did it work? Sometimes you can hear another voice in your head wondering if you deserve that chance to begin with. Hmm, you really feel that way? H huh? You once again fall from the clouds as Nim counters your argument, right as you are about to have yet another quarrel with yourself in your head. I don't know. I, I don't think my past was all that exciting. Sure, sometimes I look at our time together with fondness, but I think that's just the feeling of nostalgia taking over. It's not because the past was actually fun to live through or anything. At the end of the day, there's nothing exciting about time spent playing for... the. Playing for playing's sake or studying for studying's sake. Nothing particularly novel, either. It's the same childhood as most as most others, with very little making it special or unique. Well, that's certainly one way to feel about one's past. You had no idea if Nim felt so strongly about his childhood. As far as you knew while growing up, he was always a cheerful and straightforward guy. And yet something about him now feels remarkably different from that boy you once used to do everything with. Or maybe you're just imagining things yet again. Courtesy of all the stress you're still digesting the lost time you've yet to make up for. You decide to put that feeling at the back of your mind for now and try to continue with the conversation from there. And then I take it you've got your eyes set on the future instead. Yep, you've got that right, and my future shines as bright as ever. I'll be a great streamer with tons of fans and an awesome reputation. That's all I can dream about. And knowing that the day when it all come, when it will all come true, gets closer and closer every time I wake up makes me wake up makes this all worth it. It would seem your friend's just as jovial as ever, at least, just as reckless too. Yeah, this kind of enthusiasm is just what you need to avoid collapsing into a million pieces right now. Hey, that's the spirit. I'm sure you'll succeed if you keep at it. Honestly, I wish I could be this enthusiastic when I think of my future. Oh, come on. You've got the rest of eternity to look forward to. What's not exciting about that? You visibly shudder at the thought of spending the rest of time in your current location, current condition. We try to avoid showing that to the, to the well-meaning Drake. Well, I don't know. I can't really picture the rest of eternity right now. I've got my sights trained a little closer to home. Uh, mainly towards my actual home, now that it's as fractured as it gets. Now that nearly all my relatives have pretty much abandoned me. Once again, Nim shies his gaze away from yours, looking uncomfortable at the direction this conversation suddenly took. Yeah, you said you wanted to try and find them again, didn't you? I, I can't imagine you how you must have been be hurting right now, not knowing where you where they are. Hmm, maybe your cousin George could help you out on this front. I'm sure he knows at least where some of them are. Not that I have many left, aside from his parents. The only red toes I have left are my, other, are my other uncle and aunt, and my mom. And I'm fairly certain he doesn't know where the other where the latter's hiding. He did say my uncle and aunt are on one of their pilgrimages again, though. Maybe I could inquire a little further about that the next time I see them. One second, y'all. Water time. I got some Pattier Water. Hmm. Ah, water from the finest French spring. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. I'm being stupid right now. Your friend appears a little confused at something you just said. Though it's not, well, it's not what you initially assumed it was. Pilgrimage? Are you sure that's a real word? Huh? Yes, of course it is. 
It's like a vacation, I think, for religious people, I mean. Oh, no wonder. I didn't know about it. I don't think anyone uses words like those anymore, aside from cartoon villains. Hmm, it does sound like something a cartoon villain would say. Like, allow me to embark you on your final pilgrimage. Nim immediately recoils in surprise at your vehement, excessive shouting. Wow, you had the right voice for it and everything. That's crazy. The two of you laugh at the awkward scene you're causing. Glad that no one's around to witness you nerd out together like this. It's good to know you can still have lighthearted moments with your friends without your inner demons going wild on you all this all of a sudden. Anyway, other than my missing family, all I'm trying to do these days is keep myself together. Stay on top of things with Pandora, find time for all my friends. You suddenly remember something you meant to ask your friend from the moment you first laid eyes on him today, but almost ended up forgetting. Speaking of, how's Daphne? I haven't had a chance to talk to her in a while. You're fairly certain you worded a rather simple question, and yet Nim, Nim averts his gaze as if writing a very complicated answer. She's fine, I guess? C kind of? What do you mean? Well, she definitely hasn't been herself since last weekend. Or maybe it's more like she's more herself than ever? Yep, very complicated indeed from the looks of it. Uh, what does that mean again, in layman's terms? I don't know. She's always been unappro unapproachable, but now she feels angry, too. Angrier than usual, anyway. I wonder what happened to her. Now it's your turn to ponder your answer as carefully as you can. It's a little complicated. In spite of your best efforts to keep things vague, or perhaps precisely because of them, the dragon is quick to jump to terrible conclusions. Wait, did you just say you were going to invite her to our next outing? Wait, you did say you were going to invite her to your next outing, didn't you? Is that what caused all this somehow? No, not at all. In fact, I'm pretty sure she ended up like ended up liking that idea. It's just that an evil-looking thug who claimed she owed his his gang money almost killed the two of you, and then a weird shapeless shadow started dropping nonsense on your heads like they were writing a fantasy novel. Yeah, you're probably better off not mentioning any of that, if you had to guess. She had she's uh, just got a lot on her mind right now, is all. When she's a little more free, I, I don't doubt she'll go back to her usual self, and maybe even better than that. I hope so. I hate to find out that this was all somehow my fault. I can guarantee you it wasn't. Now cheer up! We've almost reached the store, and we can't afford to enter them with frowns on our faces. Excuse me, it'd probably send the wrong message to the locals, to say the least. Excuse me, luckily, Nim appears to recognize the value in your words almost instantly. <laughs> Swiftly puts his worries at rest for the time being. Yeah, I get you. I'm sure you're right. And come on, let's go! Trying to make the best of your time together, you hastily make your way to the new, now fully visible supermarket around the corner, trying to look excited as you do so. Well, as excited as you can be about grocery shopping, anyway. The doors to the supermarket part open with your approach, and soon you find yourselves lost in a miasma of shapes, colors, and scents. This grocery store is about as gaudy as it gets in terms of presentation. The aisles extended as far as your eye can see, filled to the brim with foods from all over the country and beyond. An excellent place to restock on beverages and snacks for when you get bored, as well as more wholesome ingredients for when you're feeling a little more daring. Now that you think about it, you never had a chance to invite anyone over at your place, any place yet, have you? Not even Apollo or Daphne, and they live just a few floors beneath you. It's a good thing you thought of, you thought of it now. You don't currently have any plans for fancy dinners or wicked parties, but it never hurts to be prepared just in case. As you mull over such things, you notice Nim's arms trembling a little under some sort of pressure. Hey, are you alright? You don't look so good. Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just a little overwhelmed is all. I don't usually go to the grocery stores this packed. He gestures at all the aisles around you as though he's ventured into an inescapable maze. You try to follow his gaze as he scouts the place, but all you can see are curious and frightened shoppers staring at you from afar, retreating away. One second, y'all. Some water time. Those lemons, those are gigantic. Those are lemons, they're huge. Yep. Y'all y'all heard it here first. Uh, the world of No More Future has gigantic lemons. Good for fighting scurvy. Cloaked gasps and confused murmurs can be heard even over the peppy music radiating from the intercoms. And for a moment, you can't help but wonder if it wasn't a mistake to bring your dragon friend along with you. You've become familiar with this kind of reaction at this point, albeit not entirely unaccustomed to it. But was it right for you to subject Nem to it as well, without so much as a warning? Excuse me? In the chaos, the two of you are approached by an employee in the store, wearing a signature light green light green apron. You know this person... If you guys hear any laughing, my roommate is having a ball in his room. You know this person from your prior visits, a somewhat shy badger in his early 20s, always looking like he's about to faint as he fiddles with his hands, and he's the only one among the staff who ever came to close to you. Probably because the rest of the team forces him to, if you had to guess. G good evening, Isaac. Uh, I see you're rather early today. 
If nothing else, he's trying his best to be polite in spite of his palpable fear. He even calls you by name, though you never gave, him, gave it to him. Yeah, me and my friend decided to do a quick grocery run to grab some essentials. It's not a problem, right? The badger squints at the people nearby, who temporarily pause their shopping and look in your direction with the wildest looks on their faces. Not exactly? I mean, you're not breaking any rules or anything by being here, but for the sake of our clients... You can sense your digital brow furrowing as you realize that there, that there is very much that there very much is a problem here. What about them? I don't recall you being worried about the last few times I visited. Well, that's because there weren't any. You always came by when we were about to close, remember? That you do. You always made an effort to come at the latest at the latest hour possible to avoid exactly this kind of situation. But still, look, I understand I can be a little frightening to some people, but I'd also like to enjoy some time together with my friends for a change. You know, doing normal people stuff and all. Is it really too much to ask? The young man scratches the back of his neck nervously, but ultimately concedes to your point with a sigh. Well, I can't really stop you from coming in, honestly, not like I even want to. But I gotta warn you, I can't stop the rest of the guests from being scared or worried either. So please, avoid making a scene while you're here. Nam angrily looks at the badger, almost looking offended. I don't think you should be giving that warning to Isaac, jerk. Nam! Before you have time to stop the dragon from defending you further, you hear the badger sigh and whisper something behind your back as he leaves. Don't suit yourselves, then. Young man leaves the two of you alone, putting an end to this brief yet thoroughly exhausting interaction. You turn to face your friend, an awkwardly apologetic look on your face. You didn't need to tell him that. I'm sure he meant well. You, you work a similar job yourself. You know you can't always tell customers what you really mean. Now it's Nim's turn to sigh as he replies. I know, I know. Sheesh. I was just trying to help out. You don't have to look at me like that. Upon hearing the dragon's remarks, you try to mellow out your expression and tone down your voice, not wanting to give him the wrong impression. I know you were, and I'm grateful for that. Honest. I just... I don't know. I guess all this negativity is starting to get to us, as a, to get to us a little. Yeah, I'm not really used to all these looks we're getting. I'm sorry about that. Don't apologize. It's not your fault they... Neb makes as if to say something, but ultimately relents at the last moment. You know what? Let's forget this all happened and get moving already. I don't want to see our time together ruined either. Now that's a sentiment you can share wholeheartedly. You give your friend a confident nod as you grab some shopping carts from the entrance and make your way into the store proper. So, what do you usually buy? I make sure I'm always stocked on potatoes, tomatoes, and carrots with, since, they're versus, since they're so versatile. And I think pomegranates should also be in season. Actually, I think I'm just going to skip a little ahead if you don't mind. Your eyes widen as you turn to face the embarrassed dragon. Are you sure? Are you already good on this stuff? Not really. I just don't usually buy them is all. Well, what do you usually buy? Instant noodles, mostly. Also canned food, pre-made sandwiches, anything can be cooked or eaten easily. You send a worried look Nim's ways, you not so silently question his lifestyle choices. Yeah, that stuff's not good for you. That doesn't sound like a balanced diet at all. What? Of course it is! There's plenty of carbs, meat, fish, veggies, and that's just in the noodles. But none of it is fresh. I don't think you can really survive off of prepackaged stuff alone. Of course I can. It's all super cheap. I don't think that's the main issue here. Why don't you at least make your own sandwiches? It's not that hard. Nim turns to look at the nearby ingredients, an uncertain look on his face as he scans the various price tags. I don't know, this stuff looks kind of expensive, and we haven't even, se haven't even seen what the bread prices are like. Relax, it's not nearly as expensive as you think, and definitely less expensive than buying pre-made stuff. Here, let me. You start grabbing fruits and veggies alike and toss them into both your, both you, both you and your friend's shopping carts, making sure to go to the, go for the cheapest alternative so as to try and minimize Nim's complaining. Hmm, let me sure to grab the butter. Are you kidding me? At four dollars per bar? How do you suppose? How do you suppose to cook without some butter on hand? Why would I want to cook at all? I said I don't like making my own food. All right, all right. I only take some for myself. What about some ham and salami then? Those always go well with a sandwich. But those aren't even on a discount. Let me do my own shopping already. No way. You're gonna catch food poisoning at the rate you're going. Let me give you some pointers. But I ah. In spite of Nim's never-ending protests, you quickly lose yourself in the all-too-familiar routine. Practiced over decades of helping your parents whenever they went to the local supermarket. The dragon's uncharacteristic worries quickly fade from your mind as you move on to the meat aisle and the egg corner, the oil section. It's only by the time you arrive at the long-awaited snacks and beverages aisle area that you realize there's no trace of Nim at your side. Nim? Are you there? No answer, save for the confused looks of nearby shoppers. Maybe you got a little too lost in this routine. You really if you consider leaving your carts behind, a better look for him in the previous areas you visited, but ultimately decide against it not wanting to inconvenience the other, cl the other clients. Now that you're alone with your thoughts and feelings, an unspeakable sensation that has been troubling you since you, agree since you agreed with them to come here earlier today can be felt in your gut louder than ever. A feeling that something isn't quite right, that there's something odd with your friend's behavior, 
Or maybe with yours. It's self-evident by now that there's some sort of barrier between you that you can't quite pin down. Some unrecognizable distance that you never felt before in your time together. Before you became a synthetic, anyway. It could be that you've become too overbearing for your own good, and that's what's, what's, that's what's bothering them about your behavior. But his overfixation on the prices and readiness... Over in the pri but his overfixation on the pr prices and readiness of use... Readiness of readiness of use of the food you're buying is simply too concerning to ignore. You never saw him distressed out about simple shopping before. Something's definitely wrong with him. That's what your instinct tells you. Perhaps he has changed in some kind of unrecognizable way. Perhaps you've changed in far more immediately apparent ways. And perhaps the culprit could be something else entirely. You give a few careful glances at the mounting number of shoppers staring in your direction from nearby aisles, likely wondering what's wrong with you all of a sudden. Whether you're alone or with others, you can never shake off the sensation of being constantly spied on, judged, and ridiculed. Could it be that this is the true driver of your mutual uneasiness? The real cause of all the troubles you've encountered so far? Could this suffocating atmosphere of confusion and unrest be responsible for everything you- Hey, you alright? A familiar voice interrupts you in the middle of your quiet mumbling, taking you by surprise. What was that? Uh, I thought he was doing like a moonwalk kind of thing. He approaches you from behind with a confused look on his face, as though he didn't just disappear while you weren't looking. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye